In 2021, there were over 520,000 new missing person cases reported by the National Crime Information Center, making it one of the lowest years in U.S. history. Many of these cases are solved quickly, but the strangest missing person cases are so unusual that even top crime investigation experts still cannot solve the mystery. Number 5 45-year-old Barbara Rushton resided at her home on Old Forest Road in Birmingham, Alabama with her husband and daughter. The Rushton family appeared happy on the outside, but deep down, a scary story was brewing. On the evening of August 29, 1984, 19-year-old Eleanor noticed her mother was acting weird. Barbara was crying and had a vacant expression after arguing with her husband at which point she told her husband and daughter that she was going to a friend's house to play bridge. No one knows what happened to her after she left her home on Old Forest Road in her white 1980 Volkswagen Rabbit. She was never to be found by her family again. By the next day, Eleanor contacted her mother's bridge club and learned Barbara was absent that night from the people she played bridge with. Whether this was her real destination or not remains unknown. A missing person case was soon opened by the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, where investigators learned that Barbara had type 1 diabetes and depended on two insulin shots a day. She didn't take any insulin with her when she mysteriously disappeared that night, and Eleanor has since postulated that her mother's bizarre behavior may be linked to spiking insulin levels. According to the teenager, on the day her mother went missing, she spent 15 minutes looking for her car keys and suddenly found she'd been holding them all along. Barbara's strange behavior in the lead up to her unsolved disappearance had worried her family deeply. Very few investigative leads came in and to this day, Barbara's missing person case remains one of the strangest mysteries to investigators who still want to see the case solved. Her car has never been found and her bank accounts showed no activity sets. Barbara Rushton is described as a white female with blonde or strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes, 5 foot 6 and 130 to 140 pounds. She wears glasses, contact lenses and her ears are pierced. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Jeannie Miller of the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department at 205-325-1250, quoting case number 830-829-22. Number 4 23-year-old Bernadette Stevenson Caruso of Dundalk, Maryland was described as a kind and loving young woman who was devoted to her daughter, Nicole. By 1986, the marriage between Bernadette and her estranged husband, Paul, had completely broken down and the two were in the middle of divorce proceedings and custody hearings. They had a court case set for October of 1986 and two weeks after, Bernadette mysteriously disappeared. Bernadette had accused Paul of getting physical with her on several occasions, and he had lost his job at the Baltimore County Police Department for mistreating a prisoner. On September 27, 1986, Bernadette finished up her shift at the Shaw's Jewelry Store in the East Point Mall and hopped into her car a gray-green 1982 Chevrolet Cavalier that her grandmother had let her borrow. After that, Bernadette went missing and neither she nor her grandmother's car have ever been found. When Bernadette failed to collect her daughter from relatives, a report was filed with the Baltimore County Police Department and the search for Bernadette began. Bernadette's co-workers told investigators that on the day of her disappearance, she had received an unusual call from Paul asking her to discuss something urgent in person. Police investigators have never released any further information about this possible meeting. Despite wide-scale searches, no sign of Bernadette has ever been found, and her family are now fundraising to purchase sonar equipment so that they can search the waters for her possible missing body. Investigators believe that Bernadette met with foul play, but without enough evidence to bring about a criminal conviction, her family continues to keep her name in the media and hopes that one day her case will be solved. Bernadette Stevenson Caruso is described as a white female with brown hair, green eyes, 
5 foot 4 and 190 pounds. She has a mole on her left cheek and her ears are pierced. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Baltimore County Police Department at 410-887-2214, quoting case number 11E934538. Number 3 In August of 1986, 53-year-old A.W. Steed received a customary call from his bank to let him know that he was $9,500 overdrawn. When A.W. looked into the matter further, he discovered that a check supposedly signed by him had been cashed at a bank in Emory, Texas. A.W. ensured the bank that he had no idea about the check, and the bank was unable to solve the mystery. Just weeks later, A.W. would disappear under highly mysterious circumstances, and to this day, his missing person case remains unsolved. After being notified about the check, A.W. discovered that his wife, Carolyn, had accrued a large gambling debt. Both A.W. and Carolyn were big gamblers, and shortly before he disappeared, he confided in his wife that he was in a huge amount of debt as well, bigger than he ever had been before. On August 30th, 1986, A.W.'s ex-wife, Magdalene, received a sudden call from Carolyn about a weekend change of plans. Instead of meeting up with the rest of the family at Lake Fork, she and A.W. had decided to stay at home and would go the next morning. If the story Carolyn told crime investigators was true, then she and her husband left their Sulphur Springs, Texas home for the Veterans of Foreign Wars post. In Carolyn's version of events, the two left the bar at around midnight, and when they arrived home, they got into an argument because A.W. had wanted to gamble. Carolyn saw her husband for the last time before he would become a missing person at around 1 a.m. when he left their Woodcrest Drive home on foot, leaving his beloved trucks behind. Ever since then, A.W. has remained absent from his family. It's fair to say that the romance had gone missing from the couple's relationship well before his mysterious disappearance. Carolyn had allegedly been cheating on A.W. with another man, and A.W. wanted to work to fix their relationship. After his disappearance, the business that A.W. ran with other members of his family was found in disarray, and his son Gary would later tell investigators that there was oil poured perfectly across parts of the floor, and that other parts had been freshly shampooed. Unfortunately, no crime evidence was obtained from the shop, and to this day, A.W. remains an unsolved missing person case. A.W. Steed is described as a white male with brown hair hazel eyes, 5 foot 8 and 140 pounds. He wears a set of full dentures, however his dental records are not available. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Texas Department of Public Safety at 512-424-5074, quoting case number M891-0003. Number 2 In 1968, Ilanka Kahn married Charles Kahn II, and soon after their marriage, the couple welcomed their son into the world. Ilanka went by the name Tootsie and was a devoted stay-at-home mother, while Charles worked at the nearby Berwick Junior School. On May 25, 1970, Ilanka would disappear without a trace in Huntington Mills, Pennsylvania. That morning, Ilanka tended to their children while Charles got ready for work. At 7.20 a.m., Charles left the home, kissing his wife goodbye for what would be the last time before she completely vanished, never to be found. When the school day was done, Charles arrived home at 3.30 p.m., expecting his wife and son to greet him at the door. Instead, as Charles pulled up in his driveway, an eerie feeling washed over him. Inside, he repeatedly called out for his wife's name, but his calls went unanswered. Charles found his son alone. Ilanka was missing. Bizarrely, Charles did not report his wife missing until May 26th of 1970, and the Pennsylvania State Police quickly became involved in Ilanka's case. Multiple searches of the area around her home were conducted, but no evidence to explain the mysterious disappearance of Ilanka has ever been found. In 2022, the Pennsylvania State Police searched a pond close to Ilanka's home, but no body or other evidence was recovered from the body of water. 
just a year after she disappeared. Grace P. Brown moved into the home that Ilanka and Charles had shared, and within months, Grace became known as Grace Can. The couple eventually split up, and there was contention surrounding their marital and relationship status. Ilanka Can's family continues to fight hard to get the mystery behind their missing loved ones solved. In her missing person report, she's described as a white female with blonde hair, blue eyes, 5 foot 6 and 122 to 130 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Edward Urban of the Pennsylvania State Police Troopers at 570-821-4110, quoting case number M648-707-699. Number 1. In 1986, 27-year-old Carrie Bray suddenly and mysteriously disappeared from the Lake Crest Development Center in Orem, Utah, a home for the disabled. Reports don't specify how long he had been living at Lake Crest as an orphan, but before he simply walked off one day, several employees remembered the man telling them for the longest time that he wanted to go to Texas to become a cowboy. After Carrie went missing, his adoptive sister, La Rie, hung missing person posters up in every town she traveled to. Utah detectives did their best to investigate Carrie's unsolved case, but he had walked away with only the clothes on his back, and they didn't expect that he would make it far. Knowing he had wanted to become a cowboy, they'd sometimes check in with Texas authorities, particularly whenever there was a new John Doe case down south. Ultimately, it was the power of the simple Google search that solved a decades-old mystery. In 2007, in southern Texas, there was a tractor mishap at a ranch. Driving the tractor was a middle-aged farmhand and cowboy named Carrie Bray. When Carrie crashed the tractor, it kicked off an insurance investigation that would finally solve the mystery years later. When the adjuster googled his name, his photo and missing persons profile was one of the first results. The insurance adjuster called the police department in Utah and working with officials in Texas, they were able to confirm this was the unsolved case of Carrie Bray. In a strange but true story, he really had gone off to become a cowboy rancher. After years of his adoptive sister fearing for his life, the missing person case was resolved with an unexpected happy ending. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.